Okay, this is um, really the only time that you use calculus in conservation of momentum is when you have, you're looking for the impulse. And the impulse is equal to the integral from 0 to t of f of t times dt. And force is a vector. So impulse is a vector as well. So that's one difference between, if you think about uh, work, work is the integral from 0 to x of f of x. That's a vector dotted with dx, which is a vector. So the differential thing is a vector. The force is a vector. And you end up with dot product of a vector. And a vector is a scalar. So work is a scalar. It doesn't have direction. Whereas impulse is um, impulse is a vector. And that's because uh, it's, um, it's equal to the change in momentum. So you've got m times v2 vector minus m times v1 vector. This is assuming the mass doesn't change, which for most cases, that's the, the case. And you then you'd have like the summation of all these things. Anyway, so there's two problems. Um, there's problem number 11 and problem number 14, which in, involve calculus. So let's read number 11. This is a time t equals zero, a 2,150 kilogram rocket. So let's write that down. Let's write the problem number down, 8.11. Okay, so the mass is 2,150 kilograms. And t equals zero, this is before anything happens. Um, the engine fires in the x direction. So this is just a one-dimensional problem. This force obeys the equation f sub x, so the x component of the velocity the force. So that's over here, force is a vector. This is the component of the vector. And there's only one, so it's we're just talking about one direction. So it kind of, it's a vector problem in one dimension, which it just means we put this little slow script there. Where t is time, it has a magnitude of, so what it's saying is that f sub x of 0 equals 0, which is pretty obvious and that the force in the x direction at a time of 1.25 seconds is 781.25 newtons. So the first thing they ask us to do is find the SI value of the constant A. So all we have to do is take the force and divide by the um, time squared. So if we solve for A, we get A is equal to f sub x over t squared. So the force is 781.25 newtons divided by 1.25 seconds quantity squared. So our constant is 781.25 divided by 1.25 squared, 500. So it's 500, and the units are newtons per second squared. So when you have this equation, newtons per second squared times second squared give you newtons. So that's all nice and great. OK, uh, what impulse does the engine exert on the rocket during the one and a half second interval, starting two seconds after the engine is fired? What impulse does the, during the one and a half second interval, Starting two seconds, OK. So what we're doing is we're going from t, t equals two seconds to, so this is like the initial time. Let's call that t sub i, t sub f. The time after this whole thing's going on, two second, two second interval, one and a half second interval. So that would give me, make that 3.5 seconds. So again, the impulse is the integral from 2 to 3.5 of f, the force, which is a function of time. So we get 500 
newtons per second squared times t squared times dt. And all I have to do is a vector because it's all in the x direction. So, okay, so you factor out the constant and you integrate t squared dt. And so it's just a power rule, add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, so you get 500 newtons per second squared divided by 3 times t cubed between t equals 2 seconds and t equals 3.5 seconds. I don't know why I wrote down 3.0 there, but that's not correct. 3.5. Okay, so when evaluating a definite integral, we just plug in the upper limit. So it's 2.5 seconds. There's one difference here between physics and calculus. You put the units in. So you get 3.5 seconds cubed. And um, minus 2.00 seconds cubed and uh, la, 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 la. okay so 3.5 to the third power minus 2 to the third power is 34.875 times 500 divided by 3. And so you get the impulse is 5,810 Newton seconds. And you know, it's force times time is Newtons times seconds. So the units make sense. And that's the right answer. Sounds good. And then the final question is how much does the rocket's velocity change during this interval? Assume constant mass. So, you know, the impulse is equal to the mass times the change in velocity. So they're asking for what is this difference? So if you solve for V final minus V initial, you'll get the impulse over the mass. The impulse is 5,810 newton seconds divided by the mass, which is given as, I think I wrote it down here somewhere, 2150 kilograms. And so that's uh, divided by 2150. And so the change in velocity is 2.70 meters per second. You know, like, how'd you get from Newton seconds per kilogram to meters per second? Well, for one thing, it's because I, I've used Newtons and not kilonewtons. I use seconds instead of hours or minutes, and I use kilograms instead of grams. So, but you can also just look at the units. So, a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. That's from Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. Okay, so that's newtons multiplied by seconds divided by kilograms. So remember to divide this out, I put a one to create a fraction. And then I'll have kilograms meters per second squared times seconds times, um, so take a reciprocal of that, I'll get one over kilograms. So kilograms cancel out. One of the seconds cancel out. I'm left with meters per second, which is what I'm expecting. Okay, so that's that problem.